Well, it's a brand new year. And we here at Whispering Hope, we're so happy that you have joined us for 2023. And so on behalf of everyone here on Whispering Hope, we just want to say Happy New Year to you. This quarter, we begin to look at managing for the masters. And for this week, we're looking at part of God's family. In our midst today, we have our very own Pastor LaFleur, our Thursday pastor. And joining us on this team is Pastor LaVent Challenger. And so we just want to welcome both of them to this new year, to this new quarter, and this new theme going forward on this lovely Thursday morning. And so today, we're focusing on the topic, treasure in heaven. And so before we get all excited about God's master plan and being part of God's family, we're going to ask Pastor Challenger to pray for us. Okay. Good morning, let us pray. Father, we want to thank you so much for another day, another opportunity at life at living. We pray, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit may give us understanding even as we delve into your word. Go before us, surround us, touch our discussion is my prayer with thanksgiving. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Amen. So before we jump into the lesson, I'm going to give both of you the opportunity just to greet our viewers who are here with us for another time. So we'll let Pastor LaFleur go first and then you pass the challenger. Good morning, Whispering Hope family. Today I greet you not from the not from Trinidad, as I normally would, but I greet you from the Amazon region in the no westernly part of Guyana, where I had to rush to attend to my a few matters with my mom. But I greet you, and I know that God will certainly guide and direct your lives in this year, 2023, as we live with the consciousness that it is one year closer to the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So may each lesson study we do serve as encouragement and faith building so that we can all be ready for when Jesus comes. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. God's blessings to you. Now, as we look forward to this another brand new year, we are poised and pregnant with possibility. God has truly given us another opportunity. And I pray that under him, we will allow his Holy Spirit to guide us as we go through this year. Uh, things uh, are not different. COVID still has us in a hole. And I really pray that um, as we go through, that we will go through by God's Spirit and allow him to lead in our lives. So God bless you and be with you and continue to study his word. And follow along in whispering hope together our topic for today treasure in heaven i don't know about you but i know as a child and even as an adult i've done a few treasure hunt mm. and the part about the hunt that is sweet is finding the treasure now when we look around in the world there are a lot of people who have amassed great wealth people like mm -hmm. elian moss people like zach zuckerberg mark zuckerberg and I can think of, you know, Bill Gates. And we can think of a whole lot of billionaires and people who have made a lot of money. But today we're talking about treasures in heaven and how important it is for us to have treasures in heaven. And so to jump into our discussion today, we're going to begin by first examining closely our memory text. I'm going to repeat it for you. And I'm going to ask both of you just to give us a take on your understanding of our memory text found in 1 John 3, 1. And Pastor LaFleur, this is the second one of my favorite texts. Anything that deals with love is my language. Yeah. And so 1 John 3, 1 says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. And so we're going to open up with Pastor LeFleur and then we will give Pastor the challenger and that's how we will interact until we are finished today. Amen. Well, this is also a passage of scripture that I wouldn't label it as a favorite, but it's a passage of scripture that I get back to ever so often personally. 
God in his sovereignty created this world. He created me. He saw and he witnessed the fall and he understood the effects the fall would have on me as an individual. He has seen my feelings and my mistakes. But yet still the text says what manner of love he has that he he calls me his child amidst my feelings amidst my ups and downs and my ins and outs it is an amazing love and this is the love of god that i want us to really grasp and get an opportunity to really massage as we live this year just thinking about this love that god has for us I am called, in spite of my failings, a son of God, a child of him. Amen. You know, it is it's quite evident that we are not makers of ourselves. It is God who made us in the beginning, and he outlined how we are to live our lives. But because we are so bent on doing us, we went so far from what God expected of us. And so we can be classified as disobedient children, wayward children. And God could have just left us to continue on our own path. But the passage speaks so clearly of the type of God that we serve and the type of love that he has for us. It is a searching love a seeking and a hunting love, you know, and he calls his children again, though through our actions, we were communicating that we don't want him as our father. So God's love for us caused them to think and to reason. And I just praise him this morning for his wonderful, amazing love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So we get into our first question. And again, I'm going to read for you Matthew 6, 19 to 21. And then I'm going to ask you a follow-up question. It says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What crucial truth is Jesus speaking here? Hmm. You know, as I looked at this question, Sister Challenger and Pastor Challenger, I thought that the crucial lesson that I am to learn, and there might be many others coming out from this text, is that my stay on earth is temporary. I must look for heaven. So my, so whatever I do in my everyday interactions must have a heavenly focus. So he was basically suggesting that the things on earth will be destroyed by the elements of nature, by natural things. But when I place my trust and my passions and my desires in heaven, recognizing that love that God has for me out of thanksgiving, I am heaven focused, then that is enduring. And everything, the fancy job, the everything will pass, for I will naturally age and retire. But when I focus on heaven, that's enduring. So my energies must be focused on heaven and getting there. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you're so right, and you're so correct, uh, Pastor. You know, it, it have really has to do with focus because we're seeing what the passage says, but what the passage did not say uh, as well, we are, you know, gleaning and, and deducing as well. It says the passage did not say this. It did not say that we should, you know, occupy like what Luke says, Luke says that we are to occupy till he comes, you know, but we 
see our focus really needs to be beyond what we can see here um what we see is time will change it but what we don't see what we need to focus on is what time cannot change you know all the cars all the houses all the the things that we amass here on earth the the, the, the millions the billions in some cases no matter it, it could be actual goal we see that time does something to it one time goal was a particular price and then it changed and it, and it got less and then it increased. It, it keeps changing, it keeps fluctuating. But what God is asking us to do is to focus on what time cannot interfere with. Yeah. He's asking us to focus on the beyond. And then that's where our focus really needs to be. Because these things that we encounter every day are just fleeting. And the time will come when they really will be of no value to us. You know, in light of our, our salvation, in light of his coming, they will be rendered ha as having no value. Right. Thank you. So let me ask this follow-up question. Is Jesus saying that as Christians that we should not accumulate wealth at all? It says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Is that what God is saying to us? Pastor Lefleur? First of all, we have to recognize and do not forget that everything in this world, wealth, health, the house I live in, the source of me getting it is God. He is the one who blesses me with it. He is not saying that we should not accumulate resources or simply wealth. But it is what I do with what I accumulate. Am I going to keep it so that time destroys it as past the challenge is saying? Or, I, or am I going to, to, to use what I have as a means of helping others to know about Jesus? Because in that way, what I have gotten in this life will have enduring value of souls being saved in heaven but if i simply get it and i keep it and i and i leave it finally when time goes it will be destroyed and it will be of no use to me then or no use to to, to any human being but what we get we are not to live lives where we are not prudent about what God has blessed us with. We must be prudent, but it is, why am I thrift in my expenses? Is it simply to say to people, oh, I have this mass of wealth, but is it that I realize that God has given me these extra dollars? What does he want me to do with it? And he directs, you know, it is not that we shouldn't accumulate, but why do we accumulate and what do we do with it? ultimately that matters and to whom do we give the credit of that accumulation is also important all right thank you you know i want to return to base by saying it and i got that it is a management issue yes so i'm returning to base and i'm saying that it is focus it's about focus that's that was my thought before my point before but it's really to add to that is really a management issue so yes. yes the things that we amass here on earth cannot be taken to the life after but how we manage it will determine whether or not god accepts us in the life after so it's really a management issue and god expects us to use what he has blessed us with for the benefit of others because it is teaching us a lesson you know when we have it's teaching us a lesson and when we don't have it's, he's also teaching us a lesson there and how we manage our situation really will help us prepare for the world to come. You know, so he expects us, God expects us to manage our lives uh, when he blesses us with finances, when he blesses us with resources. His expectation is that we use them for his honor, for his glory. For the but the point of making of management is significant. Deuteronomy... 8 18 says and you shall remember the lord your god for it is he who gives you power to get well 
that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. How do you reconcile that text with Matthew 6? What we looked at first. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rot destroys and where thieves break in and steal. So pastors, how do we reconcile these two texts? Deuteronomy saying God is the one who, you know, gives you the power to get wealth. And also, uh, we are told in Matthew not to lay up treasures on earth. So how do you reconcile both texts? Coming back to the, the point that pastor was making so beautifully on focus on management, Deuteronomy says that even in the wealth that were given to our Israelite brothers and sisters, they had to acknowledge who gave them the wealth. Who gave them the wealth? And it was not just simply given, but it was given so that a covenant, a laying up of the treasure in heaven, if I may want to, so that the covenant would be established. It is not contradictory at all. It was one acknowledging who gave the wealth and it was given for a purpose. Similarly, the resources that we have today comes from God and it is given for the building up of the kingdom of God. So what I have is not for me to be to hold selfishly, but it's to recognize that it is for the building up of the kingdom of God. And God expects us to manage, coming back to Pastor Challenger's point, to manage what he has given to us. So it's not because we got it and we say, oh, it's just, we will just lavish or destroy. I had this first elder who used to say to us, the very way he keeps his car must be a testament that God has blessed him with it because he don't know when he's going to get another one. <laughs> I, I went to an interesting little church of farmers, man. But those guys used to make all sorts of analogies to suggest that, listen, he doesn't know when he can get another one, so how we manage it, God himself must be pleased. <laughs> Meaning that God has called us to manage whatever he has given to us. And I always say uh, many times, stewardship is not really just about money. It's about understanding who we are a uh, creature created and understanding who he is creator owner so he gives us uh the opportunity to gain wealth and he's asked us to do not let the wealth that he has given to us and our management of it do not allow our focus and our fixation to be on it but more on the one who gives it. So we are called, uh, again, to be managers of what God has given to us. We are only stewards, but he is the owner. Thank you so very much. So the question of the day, how can someone lay up treasures in heaven? One, again, forgive me for being so repetitive. It's By okay. By first of all, recognizing who gives the treasure and who is the owner of the treasure. Because, you know, when you recognize who is the owner of what you have, you will be more inclined to treat and care for it so that the owner will be pleased. In addition to that, the way I carry about myself with what the owner has given to me is all about saying thanks to the owner. So I begin to lay up treasures by being, first of all, grateful to God for what he has given to me, Acknowledge him as, acknowledging him as owner. Then I begin to use and manage it in such a way with a heavenly focus. So I am not fixated simply here on what I've been given on earth, but I begin to manage it in such a way so that God's kingdom can be advanced and so that my focus is not just worldly staying here, trying to extend 
life here, but it's it's by working in, in my own humble way and utilizing the resources that God has blessed us with, even if it is with our speech, our personality, as Pastor said, you know, it's not just all about money, etc. But it's about doing things to please God. And that's how I begin to lay up my treasures in heaven. Amen, amen. Wonderful. I'll try to add another, not to repeat. God really wants to create in every human being selflessness, you know, selflessness. He wants us to be selfless individuals. You know, none of us can give to match what he has given to us, our lives. No one has can match what he has given to us again in his own son, Jesus Christ, to be that payment for our sins. But what he wants us to do is to manage what he's given us in such a way that it creates in us or it drives from us that self-serving nature that we have through sin. So he really wants us to sacrifice self as it is on, on the altar and understand that he is the one who will really sustain. Yes. All right. So we're down to our final question. And Matthew 6, 21 says, So where your treasure is, there your heart also will be. Now, where does your heart tell you your treasure is? And how so? Because the text says, So where your heart is, or where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. And then we can switch it around. Where your heart is, is where your treasure will be. So, yes, tell me. How, where does your heart tell you your treasure is? And how so? Well, if in my heart it's it's just focused on here, focused on living a self-absorbed, selfish life, then I am going to be just concerned about getting and getting and getting for me. All right? And in getting that, and that was a tremendous point, Whispering Hope family, that Pastor Challenger raised, the concept of selflessness. That is a key point we must understand in this whole thing of managing God's resources. Because if I am self-absorbed, then I take the source of everything I get as me and not of God. So the more self-absorbed I live, it is less room I have for God. And if I continue in that direction, then my heart and my treasure is here. Then my heart will be here and wouldn't even have a desire to look upward. But if daily as I see God multiplying that which he has given to me, guiding me in using it, and helping others to come to a saving knowledge of his grace, then my heart will be to get to heaven out of gratitude to God. And that is going to be indicative of where my treasure is. That's how I'm going to manage my life in, in this selfless manner to which God bids us as human beings to go. So may we always remember that selfless point and may God help us to get there. Amen, amen. You know, several years ago, we had the British American crash. A lot of people had their hard earned money, their life investments, their life savings in British American, and it crashed. So many people had their monies in various uh, schemes and banks and uh, investments around the world. And life happened and they crashed. You know, uh, our desires, that if, if we are to take that word heart out, the, uh, we will replace it with the word desire. And if we reread the passage, it says, well, where your treasure is, there your desire will be also. We Powerful. see that this world is so temporal. The things that we think uh, really carry value on the things that we think and put our trust and our hope in. We see how often they just dissipate right before our very eyes. 
We, when we, we look back at history, we see stock markets crashing and people jumping out of windows and we see natural disasters happening and people's houses are destroyed and they had no insurance and they know they worked so hard for it. And as a result of that, some people lose their faith in God because the temporal, the things that can be destroyed, yes. they yes. are destroyed. And God really wants us to put our trust, put our desires where it it cannot be destroyed. And, and that is heaven, you know, because heaven is not going to be subjected to time and sin as this earth is and we are. So heaven is eternal and it will last. And that's where God wants us to put our desires, our hope, our trust in not on the things that can be destroyed and the things that will be done away with. So that is the best investment that we can make, is putting our trust in God and what he has uh, prepared for us. Amen. Indeed, we want to thank both of our panelists this morning, Pastor Bonisi Lefleur and Pastor Lorenz Challenger, for sharing here with us on Treasure of Heaven. You know, this week we studied part of God's family. To all of our viewers, <laughs> you're God's child. Our memory text says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God. See, if we accept that we're God's children, then we're going to do what he says. Because you have children and you love your children and you give them your best. And the same is true of children. They love their parents. They go all out to make them happy. The question is, how much do you love Jesus? How much yeah. do you love God? Are you willing to let him take control of your life? And that's where stewardship begins. When you recognize that God is owner and I'm just manager. Today, God wants to be the owner of your life. He's not going to force himself on you. He paid the ultimate price for you on Calvary. And he's saying, look at this love. Behold the man of love. You were bought at a high cost. You're not cheap. God loves you and he wants you to be part of his family. So I'm saying to all of us today, from the panel to all of our viewers all over the world, accept God's family. Accept him as your father and accept him as your Lord. And he will give you all the desires of your heart. He says he will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. And so in this new year, the uncertainties before us are many. But we can put the unknown future into a known God's hands. Amen. So just want to wish everybody a wonderful Thursday morning. See you tomorrow on Whispering Hope. God bless. God's blessings. Amen. Have a God's great blessings. one, everyone.